What we're going to be going over here is direct materials price and quantity variances and we're going to be calculating those and it's going to be based on the standard costing system. So what I've done here, I've got it laid out in t-account form here. So to understand what's going on with these variances, let's just begin to trace through these t-accounts here, get a, just an overview of what's going on, and then we'll get into the details. So what you're going to do here is you're going to start out with some accounts payable. You're going to buy some of this, these direct materials that are going to be used in a specific project. And in your accounts payable, again, it's going to be a control account here, and it's going to be recorded at the actual cost we have for these uh, for these this material here. So we're going to have our actual costing recorded right in our accounts payable for the actual uh, quantity that we purchased. And then we're going to inventory it in a materials purchase control account, but it's going to be inventoried at a budgeted standard cost here. So this is the case here. We're going to be taking our, we're going to have to determine our standard price here per unit that we purchased here and compare it to the actual price here that we paid for each of these units here. And the difference times the actual quantity that we uh, purchased here is going to go into the direct materials pricing variance account here because you're going to be comparing your actual price with your standard price so that's going to be your price variance account and then when we actually use those materials we take them out of our materials purchase control account we're going to move them into the work and process control and it's going to be going to be moved in at their at the standard cost that we have allocated for the project so here they're going to come out of uh, our materials purchase control account for the actual quantity that we're using but it's going to be compared to the standard quantity that were allocated here or allowed for the specific project here based on standard costing. So the difference between our actual quantity used and their st standard quantity allocated here is going to be our direct materials quantity variance here. All right, so that's how we work at, work with this here. But before we get into those accounts here, let's just go down and let's look at just our key here. Our, our, so for what I'm showing here in AP, that's our actual price. SP stands for the standard price. AQP stands for the actual quantity purchased. AQU here stands for the actual quantity that we used. And SQA here stands for the standard quantity allowed here. So that's what I'm showing here in our T accounts. Okay, so starting out with our accounts payable here for our actual purchase here of, that, of the, those direct materials. So let's look at that here. So we're going to record it at their actual cost. In this case, the actual price here that's paid per uh, unit here is $10.20, and we're going to purchase 20, a quantity of 22,000 of this particular material here. So that $10.20 times 22,000 is going to give us, in our accounts payable for our actual cost here, 224400 Now they're going to be inventoried in our materials purchase control account here at, the, at their budgeted uh, standard price here, standard cost. So this is the case here where we're going to take in this case, our standard price or the, what we have for our standard costing system here, what we budgeted for each of these, uh, for this particular material that we're buying here, we budgeted at $10 per, uh, $10 a piece here, but we've actually are gonna paid here $10.20. So you can see there's a difference here. So first off, looking at our, our what we record here as a debit in our uh, materials purchased account here, take the $10 here times in this case, the actual quantity we purchased, the 22,000 here, that's going to give us 220,000 here that we would increase our materials purchased account by. So you can see here we have a difference between what we actually paid here, 224,400, versus our budgeted or based on our standard pricing here, uh, 220,000. So the difference goes into our direct materials pricing variance account. And what would the difference here be? The difference is $4,400. $224,400 uh, subtract, uh, look, comparing it here to $220,000. So it's going to go in as a debit amount here because you've got, had a credit here in your accounts payable of $224,400. Debit here, $220,000. So the difference is a debit here in your direct materials pricing variance account of $4,400. In that, you can look at it in terms of uh, you take your actual price here versus your standard price here on a per unit basis. So the difference here, $10.20 for the actual price, standard price here, $10, times the actual quantity that we purchased here, 22,000, quantity of 22,000. That is gonna give us what? 
20 cents the difference here is 20 cents times 22,000 quantity of 22,000 so our direct materials pricing variance would be four thousand four hundred dollars and I've got a mark here either you for unfavorable debit increase here in your direct materials pricing very accounts means it's unfavorable that means you have paid more here than uh, the budget uh, your your actual price here is greater than the standard cost that you established on this particular item here times again your actual quantity purchased here and this again based on our quantity purchased here for this direct materials pricing variance you can also look at it in terms of quantity to be used here it's less seldom used here and we'll look at that case as well here but the key is here you it's unfavorable again because we paid more than we had uh, our standard price established standard price on this product had that the reverse been true here had we paid less here than our standard price here, then we would have had a, a posit or a favorable pr a direct materials pricing variance that would have been uh, credited here or reduced by whatever the difference was between our actual a le actual price that would have been less than our standard price. Now, if you didn't even know any of these quantities here, you didn't have any quantities, all you were given is the numbers that we had here, 224,400 uh, in your payable account here versus what you record here at your uh, your what you had recorded here at your uh, standard costing here at 220,000 you can see just the difference here you'd have to come up with uh, the balance would have to been a debit here to direct materials here 4400 you wouldn't even have to know these quantities I'm just we, we go through the we we do this here because we have to know our quantities and our prices and what's going on here but I'm just saying how that would work okay so now we've figured out our direct materials pricing variance here and that was on our based on our actual quantity that we purchased now let's go and I do determine our quantity variance here now this is the case here where in our materials purchase control account we're gonna take this we're gonna take it out at the budgeted uh, standard price per unit but we're going to take it out here at the actual quantity that we used here so materials purchased for the actual quantity we used for this specific job here let's look at it uh, we're going to have used 20,050 units here that uh, product we purchased 22,000 here but we're only going to use 20,050 of the units here we take it times the uh, standard established price here for our, our standard costing here at ten dollars a piece so our materials that we control account here it's going to be reduced here by ten dollars times twenty thousand fifty units here uh, reduced uh, where that equals two hundred thousand five hundred dollars here okay so that's based on our actual quantity we used here and our standard price but now when it flows into the work and pro in process account here it's going to come in at its standard cost and what we mean by standard cost is this is where we're going to have to uh, take it based on the standard quantity allowed for this specific project here we're going to have used uh, we're going to have used a certain quantity of this material here but based on our standard costing we only have a certain number we have a standard quantity that we allowed here for the job yeah okay so our work in process is coming in at, at that amount here so let's say our standard price was again the ten dollars here per unit a standard price on a material here times the standard quantity allowed for this job here is twenty thousand we purchased twenty two thousand dollars a quantity of twenty two thousand of this particular material but for our work in process based on that project here we we only allocate or allow 20,000 of those uh, quantity here that we can use and again we're going to have actually 20,000 here for the work and process we can only get understand that the standard quantity allowed here for the specific project here is quantity of 20,000 but we actually used here a quantity of 20,050 here so this is where our direct material quantity variance comes in standard quantity allocated at 20,000 standard quantity actual quantity we actually used here 20,050 so the difference here actual quantity used here 20,050 less our standard quantity allocated here at 20,000 times our standard price here at $10 here per unit 
is going to give us our direct materials quantity variance here of 500. Again, just a balancing entry here between our budget, what's coming out here at the actual quantity we used here, 200,500, versus what we, our standard quantity allowed here, 200,000. Difference is, goes to the direct materials quantity variance here for debited here for $500. Just a dip, balancing our credits here with our debits. And again, looking at it in terms of the actual quantities here, because we actually, uh, the quantity that we actually use here is 20,050 or a quantity of 50 more than what we, our standard cost or our standard quantity we allocated here at 20, of 20,000. So that's, that's how we get our direct materials uh, quantity variance, again, based on quantities. Again, in times the difference in our quantities here times the standard price per unit. Again, you can see this was unfavorable here because we had to debit our direct materials here for $500. Just a balancing amount here. 200000 here plus our 500 here in our quantity variance account uh, equals our credit here of the materials that we actually used here, 200500 just a debiting amount. Again, if you didn't know any of these quantities, just knew your amounts here, you could see where you'd have to come up with in, uh, direct materials quantity variance here of $500. Now, if the opposite was true here, had we used less here, say it would have been 19,000 some units here versus the 20,000 that was actually allowed here, then we'd have had a direct materials quantity variance that would have been favorable here. Credit would have been favorable amount here. So just to understand how you get these, under, understand your debits and credits here based on your balances here in your materials, purchased accounts here and your work and process account. So that's how, that's how it works here. Any debits here in your direct materials, uh, quantity variances is, a, is unfavorable, any credits is favorable. Same as we had in our direct materials pricing variance account. Okay. So we've went, we've gone through that here. Just to understand uh, again, just to go on direct materials pricing variance here. That was simply based on their actual price versus our uh, standard price that was allocated here times the actual quantity purchased, and that in this case gave us a unfavorable uh, pricing variance here based on prices prices here times the actual quantities that we purchased. And then for our direct materials quantity variance, that was based on quantities here. Actual quantity used versus the standard quantity that was allocated times your standard price here per unit. That's where you get your quantity variances here. So that's how it works. And this was based on our quantity purchased here. Now let's just go over these T accounts here one more time, just so you can jot these down here if you don't, if you don't quite understand all this all these letters here. So for our direct materials here, that it was our actual price minus our standard price here, actual price minus our standard price times the actual quantity purchased. That's for direct materials pricing variances. And then for direct materials quantity variances, it's the actual quantity used minus your standard quantity allowed here times the standard price again. Okay, so that's for our price and quantity variances. Now let's move up to our accounts payable here for our actual cost. So this is where you take your actual price times the actual quantity purchased up here. And then for our materials purchase control, the budgeted numbers here, first for our inventoried amount here, uh, I've got that shown here, that's the standard price times your actual quantity purchased. Okay, so that's where how we brought the inventory in here. So now when we used up the inventory here, this is the case here where you take your standard price times your actual quantity used. Standard price times the actual quantity used. Okay, now one last thing here for our work in process at our standard cost here. This is where you take your standard price times your standard quantity allowed here. Standard price times your standard quantity allowed. Okay, so that's uh, using our standard uh, costing system here to determine our direct materials pricing variances here and quantity variances. One's based on difference in price uh, for your 
price variance, obviously, for the direct materials in this case. The other was based on your difference or your quantity variances here. All right, all right. So one last thing that we want to look at here. Okay, now let's just move over here just to make a point of this here. So all the numbers, same as what we went uh, through and over there for our, our, our variances here for our pricing variances and our quantity variances everything being the same the only thing is sometimes this direct materials pricing variances here is based on the quantity used rather than the uh, quantity purchase so if we look at it in these terms here just take our our we'll take it a direct materials pricing variance let's say uh, actual price here was ten dollars and twenty cents times our standard price here of what ten dollars here so the difference is twenty cents again here times not the actual quantity purchased here twenty two thousand if we're basing on the quantity used that is twenty two thousand fifty units here that's the actual quantity that we used here so this is uh, this uh, direct pricing variance is based on the actual quantity used versus what we looked at before was the actual quantity purchased only to make that difference and if you do your arithmetic here your direct materials variance is going to be four thousand ten dollars it was forty four hundred dollars here based on the actual quantity purchased but the actual quantity used it's less here okay do you only make that point here all right and then one other thing just to go through the definition here one more times if you're if you just want to look at the pure definition here you take your direct materials pricing variance and it's usually based on the actual quantity purchased here. So if you had the actual quantity used, then you'd have to plug that in here. But direct materials pricing variance, by definition, it's the actual quantity purchased times the actual price. And then you subtract from that the actual quantity purchased again here times the standard price. So the, again, we're just for direct materials pricing variance, we're just comparing our actual difference between our actual price here and our standard price times the actual quantity purchased here. And then for our direct materials quantity variance here, by definition, what you're going to do is you're going to take your actual quantity used times your standard price here, and you subtract that here from the, uh, the standard quantity allowed here, again, from the standard price. So uh, you're taking your differences, your actual quantity used, less your standard quantity allo allowed here times your standard price. Okay, so by definition, that's what we're looking at here, just going out for direct materials pricing variance. That's between your, in this case, if you look at it, quantity used here or quantity purchased here, really looking at the difference between your actual uh, actual price here that you paid uh, minus, uh, comparing your actual price you can paid here uh, to your standard price allocated for the particular project times whatever quantity you're going to be using here based on the purchase quantities here or quantities they actually use. And then direct materials quantity variance, just say again, it's based on your difference between your actual quantity used here and your standard quantity allowed or allocated for the particular project here. You just have to understand that times some standard price, that is going to give your direct materials quantity variances here. All right, so that'll pretty much summarize our subject.